Today, my first year of undergraduate studies begins at Hajimara University. I made sure to get here early so I can make it on time to my first lecture. But somehow, I managed to get horribly lost. I climbed the stairs to look for my classroom on the second floor, but couldn't find it. I turned to go back down, still reading the map. Suddenly, I collided into something, or rather, someone. Whoa! I lose my balance and throw out my arms to catch myself. My things fly out of my hands, scattering all over the stack. Over his shoulder, I can see the contents of my bag that have been appended. I click my tongue and try to move to gather them. But then I realize the guy still has his arms around my waist. I pull back to I pull back to look at him and our meet, eyes meet. Are you okay? Yeah. Thanks for catching me. But could you let me go now? Oh, yeah. Sorry. He lets go of my waist hastily and takes a small step back. Here. Let me pick this up for you. Hi. He bends down to gather my things before they get stepped on by the passerbys. I'm show. He picks up my map and looks at it before handing everything to me. Is this your first year here? <laughs> yeah. Then welcome. It's my second year here myself. He taps the line on my class schedule. If you were looking for this, you just passed it. It's back down the hall on the left. Oh! Thanks! One word, seven sentences. I've barely taken the paper back before Sho grabs my wrist to look at my watch. Oh crap, I just realized my next class is on the other side of campus. I got the jet. See ya. Before I fully realize what's happening, Sho has turned around and is sprinting away. What was that all about? But since I'm about to be late for class, I don't have much time to wonder. Pushing Sho out of my mind, I start running towards class myself. <coughs> after, after a morning of classes, it's finally lunchtime. I'm at the counter paying for my food. <laughs> Paying for my food, or at least I'm supposed to be. When I reach in my bag, I grope around for my wallet, but I can't find it. The cashier stares at me, wholly unimpressed with my lack of preparation. Oh no! Don't tell me I lost it. I'm starting to panic when a black leather wallet is thrust in front of my face. Is this yours? I'm not actually sure at first until I see the small star, small star shaped ch charm hanging off of it. I feel immense relief as I take the wallet. Oh good, that's a relief. I was looking everywhere for you. That sounds so familiar. Thank you, I thought I lost it for good. Is there any? Don't worry about it. You're cute enough, and it's payment enough for me if you smile. Huh? <laughs> Click. Okay. He looks expectant enough that I manage to pull my lips into something semblant of a smile. <laughs> Looking strangely satisfied, he points to the annoyed cashier before hopping over the line's railing. Completely flustered, I shake my head to clear it. I quickly turn around to pay for my food and take my tray to head outside. I've become cooped up all day. I need some fresh air. I step outside into sunshine as a chilly breeze passes right through me. I shiver involuntarily, but it feels refreshing. Thankfully, it also means that there's hardly anyone outside. I sit on a bench on the grass and relax as I admire the campus's scenery. 
But then I hear a voice nearby. I slowly stop chewing and look around to identify the voice. Oh, come on. Don't be ridiculous. There's no way that actually happened. The male's voice is laughing and energetic, yet I see no one around. I love how energetic I sound. <laughs> <laughs> yet I see no one around. It sounds like someone talking on the phone. Whatever it is, it's kind of annoying. Well, excuse me. <laughs> someone moves into view near the flowers. They seem to be looking at nothing in particular. <laughs> fine, fine. I believe you. You don't have to look so annoyed. Aha! Uh -huh. I spotted the mystery man. <laughs> I wonder what's so funny. Startled by the sudden sound of a phone ringing, I nearly choke on my food. Huh? I slowly, almost fearfully, look over at the guy I thought was talking on the phone. And see him pull one out of his pocket. <coughs> Tap in when I notice that the man is looking at me. Maybe you should brush up on your spying skills if you want to listen in on people. I quickly turn back around. Uh, okay. I try to ignore the weird guy and manage to finish eating my lunch in relative peace. When I get to my apartment, I open up my laptop. I want to sign up for that business club I heard about before tomorrow. My phone vibrates before I can do such, though. I take it out and realize that there's a rare email from my mother. First week of school. Is everything going well? You left your laptop charger here. I'll be at home Saturday, so could you come get it then? I'd like to take you out to a nice restaurant to celebrate your first week, Mom. Oh, of course I left something important at home. And I was trying to be so careful about everything. The end of the email was a bit strange, though. She'd never really been the type to celebrate things. Regardless of my thoughts, I type a reply that I'll be there on Saturday. But the strange feeling the email gave me never goes away. The next day, I managed to get through class without getting lost. I finished classes for today, and I'm headed to the first meeting of the business club. Room 129, there it is. I push the door open. As soon as I do, a black-haired man turns to face me. Your turn. I can't do him. <coughs> Welcome to the... He stops mid-sentence and stares at me. I'm struck silent for an entirely different reason. The man has striking aqua-colored eyes. Ooh. Dot, dot, dot. We stare at each other for a few moments before a voice behind me interrupts. Hey, come on, let me in. <laughs> Flustered, I hurry to move out of the way and step into the classroom. As the man goes by, I recognize his distinctive fit, distinctive hair. Oh, it's that weird guy who, who was talking to himself. I glance at the black haired man again, but he's turned away from me. <coughs> I turn to face the class and lock eyes with a young looking guy in yellow. Is that the guy from the cafeteria? He gives me a big smile that strikes me as a sun suddenly familiar. Weird, I feel like I know him from somewhere. He lifts his legs up and jumps to his feet in one fluid movement. Then he turns to the newcomer. Hey, Chanji, I came here to talk to you. Oh? Oh, I forgot about that. I'll lend you that book next week, Takumi. <coughs> huh? That's not about the book, it's... Excuse me, please don't block the wet walkway. I hear, an, I hear an irritated voice behind me. I turn to look, equally irritated at his rudeness. Love at first sight already, Tetsuya? 
Sh shut up, Shinji. I mentally move away from the door and go, sit to go to sit down. A few moments after I do, someone starts yelling. <laughs> no! The peaches are running away! to where I heard the voice and see a guy in a bright orange hoodie sleeping on the couch. Is that? I think it was Shu. What the hell? Why is he here? I'm not sure really. He did stay up pretty late practicing for his part he just got though. So, I guess napping. I think he said something about wanting to join the club. Whatever. Let's just start the meeting. Thanks for watching the club for me, Professor Kaz Kazama. Kazama. I know, it's weird. Tatsuya turns around, but the professor is gone. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> How did he slip out without anyone noticing? But no one else seems to think it's all that strange. The meeting commences without any further weirdness, though I'm surprised at how small it is. Since it seems like we have some new members this year, maybe we should start this meeting by introducing ourselves. I'm Tatsuya Yukimara, the club president in a third year. I'm Shinji Hariyama, a third year. <laughs> I've been a member of this club for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think everyone here already knows me. I'm Takumi Arai. Or Taku for short. <laughs> it's my first year here. But I'm not actually even a part of this club. <laughs> I raise an eyebrow at Takumi's introduction. So why is he even here? I look at Sho and... Tatsuya kicks the couch. Sho startles awake. Huh? Where am I? <clears throat> At the business club you were talking about joining. Huh? Oh, oh! We're doing introductions and, it turn and it's your turn. Oh, alright. I'm Sho Hattori, a second year. I just joined the club. I'm. Wait. My acting teacher told me if I want to become an actor, it's good to get some understanding on how business works. So here I am. Everyone looks at me expectantly, and I stand up and slightly bow. I'm Sujin Fujimoto. It's my first year here. It's nice to meet you all. I sit back down. And Tatsuya starts going over what the purpose of this club is and the kinds of things we'll be, go we'll be doing in it. But every now and then I see the purple hair guy, Shinji, glancing at me. Ooh, he's got the hat for her. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> what? Am I like a super attractive today? Eventually the meeting is over and I stand up and grab my bag. But Shinji walks slowly up to me like he's in a daze. He stares he stares me in the face. You're not. What? Jeez, is there something on my face? Dot dot dot. Suddenly Shinji just walks right past me. It's as if I don't exist at all. It's Saturday and I've gotten lost a few times. But I finally found the coffee house the mother wanted, wanted me to meet her at. I spot her immediately as I enter, sitting at one of the tables by the window. Mother looks as put together as ever. I walk up to her table. She only gives me one of her inscruta inscrutable expressions. Hello, mother. I'm sorry I'm late. I got a little lost on the way. As I take my seat, I realize she's already ordered something for me. Mother looks at me over her teacup with that usual half smile of hers. I do not wait long. 
but I did wonder if you would be able to find this place. I know it is a little out of the way. Most people don't know much about this district. I eventually figured it out. So, um, I didn't know you frequented places like this. Mother gently places her teacup on the table. The eerie color of her eyes always makes me feel like she can see right through me. For a moment, I feel like I'm 10 again, being judged to see if I'm worthy of knowledge. I don't. But a very old friend of mine owns this place. I wanted to come see it at least once. An old friend? Now I'm curious, though I doubt she'd actually tell me more. Oh, I see. And a comfortable silence settles upon us, as usual. And as usual, I start rambling. So, school has been great. I even joined a club. Oh, but how are you, how are Dad and Kayo doing? Look how... Hmm. Your sister began school. She apparently made a friend. A very nice boy. And Rokuro is out of the country on business this week. Having nothing else to say, the conversation quickly dies down. I look out the window as I quietly sip my tea. Lunch with mother, it's not even a bit awkward. Nope. But at least Kayo has a new friend. I hold back a sigh. Sujin, I must admit, I asked you to meet here for a reason. There is somewhere I want to take you. God, I have been meaning to ever since we came back to Japan. Will you come with me? Dot. She seems sad. It's utterly strange to see my always controlled mother let any emotion slip. I've left speechless, but I can't hide the curiosity bubbling up inside me. She almost never wants to share anything with me, so this has to be something huge. Of course, mother, I'll go with you. After we finish eating, I follow mother out of the coffee house. Her high heels click against the pavement as she walks in front of me. It's just the same. Even though I'm 20, I still feel like a child. Always following, never catching up, but maybe now she sees me as adult? Maybe things will be different from now on. It's with these thoughts that I eagerly get into her car. I sit in the car beside my mother, looking out the window. Maybe if I ask, she'll tell me where we're going for once. I sigh, knowing she'll just evade the question if she doesn't want to answer it. If she wanted me to know, she would have told me. I sneak a glance at her. She's not sitting in the scene. Not that, that. Her knuckles are white from how hard she's gripping the steering wheel. And there's a somber expression on her face that I can't quite place. Seeing her, of all people, so unsettled makes me beyond anxious. Mother, where are you taking me? Um, Mother? Yes. <laughs> well, where are we going? I can't keep the nervousness out of my voice, and Mother seems to pick up on it, as she usually does. There's no need for con to concern yourself. I sit back in the seat with a sigh. I knew she was going I knew she wasn't going to tell me. But unexpectedly mother keeps talking. We are going to the countryside. I will explain more when we get there, so please just relax and make yourself comfortable. The countryside? I guess it might be a few hours then. I can't believe she even said that much though. I settle in my seat for the long ride, feeling like I might have made a small breakthrough with my mother. After a very quiet, quiet car ride, we finally stopped at a house in the country. I stepped outside of the car in amazement. A traditional home. Whose house is this? The gentle breeze sways through the tall field, rippling through the blades of grass. It makes such a pleasant sound, and it smells so good out there, out here, that my nerves are somewhat calmed. It's beautiful out here. Yes, it is. 
Mother walks ahead of me with the key and unlocks the door to the house. I hesitate a moment, not wanting to go inside. The sunset is so beautiful, but I can't keep Mother waiting. Maybe I can come outside later? Regretfully, I walk into the house ahead of Mother, who follows me in and shuts the door. Wait here. I'll bring us some refreshments. Hey. Okay. Mother leaves before I can finish the sentence. Alone in the room, I sit down at the table. I'm not sure where we are, but it's very peaceful out here. The sound of the door sliding open distracts me from my thoughts. Mother comes in carrying a tray of snacks and some tea. She glides across the room and gently places the tray on the table in front of me. Now we can have our chat a little more comfortably. Thank you. Mother sits down on the other side of the table. <laughs> I'm sure you're wondering what this place is and why I brought you here. Of course. For a few moments, we sit in silence. Mother seems to be thinking about how to say it. This house is built on the land my ancestors lived on a hundred, hundreds of years ago. They lived and worked here. They spilled blood here. The way she says it sends a faint chill down my spine. I wanted to bring you here to show you this place that's so full of history. There aren't many things left here from it from that time, but I thought you would enjoy seeing it again anyway. She takes a small sip from her cup and I follow suit. A pleasant warmth yeah. washes over my body. Thank you for the tea. It's very good. Can you sh show me uh, around a bit? Ugh. A wave of dizziness hits me like a ton of bricks. As the world starts to spin, I have to physically hold on to the table. Sudi, are you alright? I, uh, I don't feel well. Everything keeps spinning and my vision goes black. Ugh. I open my eyes to see the moon hanging up high in the sky above me. The sky is... Wait... Huh? Where the hell am I? I try to move, but my body is completely unresponsive. What is this? What's going on? Why can't I move? Help me, someone please. I'm panicking, but I can hear someone coming closer. They're muttering under the breath. Up already? I knew I should have used more potion. What? Did they say potion? Help me, please, help. Someone sighs. <sighs> it's useless to shout, you know. No one will hear you. But don't worry. This will be over soon. What? what? Who are you? What's going on? Another sigh, then footsteps. A familiar face comes into view. Mother stands over me, her eyes glowing. M mother what I told you it's going to be over soon mother snaps her fingers as if I was a marionette on strings my body plays along sitting up on its own I can see a strange chalk circle outlined on the ground around us her heels click against the stone she walks to something that looks suspiciously like an altar of some sort. Creepy. Please explain. What have you done to me? Why? How? I can see her eyes dart towards me momentarily as she continues to work. She places various crystals along the chalk outline. My heart is beating impossibly fast. I try to stay as calm as, possible, as I possibly can. I suppose I should explain. It's only fair. <coughs> She stops and looks at me. I am. I am many things. My true name is Shizuka. I am the last living sorceress. A mistake rendered me cursed, unable to die. What? But how, how is that even possible? 
I want to doubt her words to simply write this all away as some weird dream. But it feels real. Too real. She laughs and continues her strange preparations. The curse of immortality is Im immortal as well. Of course it would be like that. It's almost funny. It might have been an accident, but considering who he is, it makes perfect sense. For centuries, I have searched for a way to undo the curse. I thought it hopeless until a friend told me of a way I could finally be rid of it. Mother continues to carefully place crystals in a circle around me. The only way it would work, however, is if I completed the ritual on a very specific date, and if I had someone very specific to transfer the curse onto. With a momentarily pause, she glances at me. A daughter? No, not a daughter. All right, a homunculus, a perfect copy of my physical self, so I created you. I'm not your mother. I'm an alchemist who made you. Any words I could say get stuck in my throat? I feel like I'm going to pass out again. This has to be some sick joke. This can't be real. This is all just a terrible dream. I just need to wake up and I'll be back in my bedroom. But if this by some insane chance is real, there are some things I want to know. Who was it who cursed you? Just how old are you anyway? A god. So ancient, he's no he no longer remembers his own name. As for my age, I'm over 700 years old. There are a million more things I want to ask, but Shizuka... <laughs> Shizuka carefully places the last crystal. The chalk outline suddenly glows an eerie green. W wait! Stop! With a wave of her hand, my lips snapped shut. Now completely paralyzed, all I can do is watch. Shizuka kneels in front of me. She takes out a small vial of some strange liquid. It looks like billions of tiny shimmering stars gently swirling together in a tiny bottle. She quickly downs it. Ugh, that tasted about as bad as I expected. Shizuka stares at me, and I can see the green of her eyes start to swirl and change into brown. I feel a sharp pain in mine at the same time. I want to scream as the pain spreads from my eyes to the rest of my body. But since I can't move, all I can do is scream in my head. It hurts so much. Please make it stop. As my vision slowly darkens, I see Shizuke stand up, her eyes now completely brown. I'm sorry. I can barely hear her whisper her the words. As she disappears from my vision, the world goes dark. Ugh. I grab my head that's throbbing with pain. Where am I? I'm so groggy, I can scarcely remember my own name, much less what happened yesterday. I managed to force my eyes open and ease myself up into, into a sitting position. Look at your eyes. I see them. Holding my head still, holding my head still, I go back through everything I remember. I went to school, then I met my mother for lunch on Saturday. Flashes of strange image, images suddenly come to, my, come to mind. A strange house I didn't know my mother owned. Having tea by the setting sun. Then last, the feelings of helplessness, fear, and confusion while my mother made strange preparations under, the, under a full moon. And of course, brief but excruciating pain. I laugh nervously. That's right, must have been a dream. I can't shake the negative feelings the dream gave me though, or my grogginess. Somehow though, I managed to push myself out of bed. 
I checked my phone screen, noticed there was an email notification from the school. But more importantly, crap, I have to get to school. I rushed to get dressed and grab some pain relievers before I run out the door. While waiting for a traffic light to change, I checked my phone. Curious, I opened the email I saw earlier. Blah, 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 blah. You have been added to Intro to Mystical Studies 101. Please follow the instructions below to find your class. What? I think back, but I don't remember requesting any such class. <laughs> Mystical Studies? Is that, like, religion or something? The class starts almost immediately after my last one of the day, so I won't have time to find out about it. I'll just go talk to the teacher and figure it out later. The light turns green and I put my phone away. Yeah, I won't worry about all this weird stuff. Just keep focused on what I need to do today. Despite my best efforts, my headache never went away. But all my classes are done for the day. Well, except for one. I go in the elevator and look for a button to the basement, as the instructions said. I didn't even know this place had a basement. Place finger over elevator buttons? Hmm. I hover my finger over nothing, feeling like an idiot. But then the air shimmers around my hand. A button appears in the empty space with a symbol indicating basement. What just happened? Okay, okay, Sujin, just just stay calm. You're probably just tired and seeing things. I firmly cut off all other thoughts forming in my mind and press the button. I step out into a hallway that looks like look, looks like something out of a fantasy movie. It does. Pretty cool. <laughs> okay, this is getting so weird that even I'm starting to have trouble ignoring it. I'm nervous now. There aren't any students that I can see, and I'm a little intimidated by the dimly lit hall. I slowly walk down the corridor. The rooms are sparse and a few between, leading, leading me to wonder just how big the rooms are. Finally, I stop in front of a large door. I take a deep breath to gather my courage. I push it open. A black haired man turns to look at me. I get an intense sensation of deja vu. Are you Professor Kazuma? So there you are, Fujimoto. Um, sorry, um, sorry I'm late? It took me longer than I thought to get here. No worries, it's your first day. Have a seat. I do as I'm told. I scan the room quickly and find an empty seat in the strange classroom. Wait, did I just... I could swear that I just saw some familiar people in the class. But it would be rude to look around, so I just face forward. Oh, I forgot to ask if I should be in this class. Oh well, I'm curious as to what it's about. Professor Kazuma walks up to me and hands me a syllabus. When I look down at it, I'm not sure if it's a joke or not. Objectives. Understand early magical history. Understand basics of advanced magical theory. Demonstrate mastery of basic magical techniques. What is this? But by then, the professor has already walked back to the front of the room. He launches into a lecture on something called the unseen world. Everyone around me looks as if this is nothing new, but I keep waiting for the punchline. It's more correct to call the unseen world multiple realms. Most supernatural beings live within the hidden pocket of the human realm. But there are at least nine different realms that we know of. I'm trying to keep my focus on the lecture, but I'm kind of freaking out. What Professor Kaz Kazuma is saying sounds insane, yet no one around me is reacting to it. On top of everything, there are windows in this class. In a basement. And they're showing some kind of mountain scenery. None of this makes any sense. I feel like I have to get out of the room or I'll lose my mind. 
but through force of will, I managed to keep it together until the end of class. That's when the professor asked me to come up to the front of the room. Fujimoto, would you come up to the front of the class? I'd like you to provide a demonstration of your power for us. Huh? I walk up to the front slowly, in a complete daze. This will be your homeroom for your magical class. Class. But I've been asked to see what you can do so we can better place you in the rest of your classes. Uh, I have no idea what, what's going on here, but I think you have the wrong girl? You mean you really have no idea what any of this is about? No, I don't. Well, maybe the fastest way for you to understand is through a first-hand experience. With that, Professor Cosma places one of his hands out toward me, palm up. A small sphere of light forms over it, and I can't believe what I'm seeing. Wh what? What's going on here? Genuinely scared, I take a few steps back amidst the murmurs of the class. Here it goes. Cosma pulls his hand back, aiming the sphere right at me. How? Why is this happening? What do I do? My fear, stress, and confusion with the entire situation finally comes to a boiling point. The splitting headache I've had all day is just icing on the cake. All of a sudden, more than anything else, I'm pissed off. A hot feeling bubbles up inside me and I feel like I'm going to burn up. A painfully bright light surrounds me. I can barely understand what's happening as Kazuma throws the sphere at me. I'm aware of the sensation of cold, hard stone underneath me. I feel extremely worn out, like I can't even move my head. But I also notice my headache has gone. For some reason, I smell smoke and I struggle to open my eyes. I see two surprising people around me from the business club of all places. The one kneeling next to me is... Sho. And the one standing looking down at me is... Tatsue. What are they doing here? I also see many students standing around. Farther away, I see a beautiful woman tending to Kazuma, who is holding his hand. Sorry about this, Luz. Just try not to get yourself blown up again for, for a while, Hikaru. So his name's Hikaru. Something about the name strikes me as being right far more than Kazuma. And what does she mean by blown up? That's when the previous events all come rushing back to me. I tried to sit up, but Sho puts a hand on my shoulder. Don't overdo it. Just lie down. You must be exhausted after releasing so much power. P power? Just then, Shinji walks over. He's here too? What the hell is going on? That's right. You kind of blew up this classroom. Yeah, sorry about that. I turn and see Hikaru walk up to the group. Despite what Shu had said, I managed to push myself up anyway. I really under I really underestimated you. Thankfully, I managed to shield everyone in time, but my hand in the classroom didn't get off so easy. I look down his hand. It's covered in bandages. I feel distinctly horrified and so confused. I did that? You did. I know it wasn't on purpose, but that just makes you even more dangerous. I don't know how you awaken so suddenly and with so much power. But you're too dangerous right now to others and yourself. You need to partner with someone until you can get your powers under control. What do you mean by partner with someone? I don't even understand where these supposed powers came from. Then it hits me. My mother. The ritual. 
Somehow, it wasn't a dream. Regardless, you need a lot more instruction than just a class every evening. You need someone who will be able to help you learn the basics and protect themselves from you. Professor Kazuma looks around at the guys surrounding me. Since these young men seem to be so interested in you, maybe you could choose one of them. <laughs> Every one of them is trustworthy. I know you'll be able to rely on them. What? Seriously, Mr. K? You have got to be kidding me. I don't have time to babysit anyone. If she needs help, I don't mind. Consider it an assignment. I'll grade you on it in every everything if you want. But Fujimoto, your powers are are far too volatile to be left alone. I know it's a lot to ask, but please make your make your decision now. <laughs>